friends, I'm here trekking in a desert in a place called the El Paso Mountain Area, which is located in Kern County, California. Now, as I'm wandering the desert, I'm looking for signs of ancient life. And I saw this hilltop over here, and I noticed that there's a gully, a stream running down right here, you can see in front of us. And as I was walking the area, I noticed that there was what's called a grinding slick. Anyways, it was a stone used to prepare food. As I continued to wander around here, I found what is commonly referred to as a rock ring or a house circle. So I'm going to show you what it looks like and the importance of finding these type of rock rings and what they mean. Oh my goodness, look at this. Right here in front of us, there's a small one right over here. Look at this. Now, it's barely discernible, but you can see right over here, you can see the shape. Barely discernible. This looks like a hut or a foundation for what they call a wiki-up. Okay, this is what these stones generally represent. They represent the foundation for a structure called the wiki-up. Now, we're coming close to the one that I found that is really interesting, very discernible, and there it is right in front of us. I mean, this is really fantastic. Now, the concept was to lay the stone here in a circular pattern right over here. Now, the pattern here is broken, but there was an entrance, say right over here. Now the purpose of these stones was to take the brush, for example, right in front of us, you can see some brush right there. And what you would do is then take this brush, these sticks, and you would place them right here. I'm gonna use my walking stick to show you. Right here, here's my walking stick. So these sticks, these branches, any timber they had or bushes, they would put like this in an arc or um, in a teepee fashion around this circle to form the walls of their structure. So this is what a wiki-up structure foundation looks like. So this indicates that people lived here. And let me show you what I found to verify this idea that people lived here. Now you have to remember, there was a water source directly in front of us. We saw a very small rock ring already. Here's a second larger rock ring over here. But as I was walking around the area trying to find signs of ancient life, I came across a food processing area. It's called a grinding slick. Now grinding slicks are flat stones where seeds were crushed, made into a flour, powder-like substance to eat. Anyways, right here in front of us is a grinding slick. Now you might ask yourself, how do you know this is a grinding slick? Well, one of the characteristics is this discoloration right here. Can you see it? Right here. So there's the dark area, and here's where the grinding occurred. So they used a stone, a flat stone, to grind this way. Now, I'm going to look around because usually around these sites you can find the, oh my goodness, here it is, look, here's what I'm talking about. See this right here? Can you see that? How flat this is right here? Oh yeah, I can run my hand, it's completely smooth. So they would take a stone like this. Now this is a large stone, and they would place it here on top, and like this, grind the seed, grind the seed. Now this looks like a big two-handed type uh, grinding stone, or monos is uh, what they were called. Let's see, well, look, right over here, here's a smaller one. Here's a smaller one right here, it's broken. Okay, so look at this, let me turn it over. Okay, here's one side, okay. Now this side here is very, very smooth, almost like it's been sanded, and that's from the grinding action. So anyways, this is interesting. We've seen a mano, okay, a grinding stone. We've seen a slick over here directly to our front. And directly behind me, right over there, you can see the rock ring. And there was a stream at one time flowing right here. So we had ancient man living at this site at one time. I tell you, this is truly fascinating.
look at the first rock ring that we saw and I wanted to show you something. See this stone right over here? I essentially found it, you know, mostly buried, but I saw the tip right over here. So I pulled it out and this is really fascinating. This is another uh, Stone Age tool known as a chopper. And so this chopper is found here at the food processing site. Now if you take a look at the chopper, it's been shaped. In other words, percussion blows have struck this stone and cleaved off the sides. And a chopper is usually heavy, and what they use this for is essentially almost like a meat cleaver. So you could take bone and meats and basically hit them like this, hit them real hard, you know, slam them down almost like you would do with a big meat cleaver. So this could be used to crush bone, to chop through, uh, you know, uh, meats and, uh, you know, other items that needed uh, crushing and cutting. So this is known as a chopper. It's a Stone Age tool. It's uh, fascinating to find it right here at this food preparation site. And if you remember right over here, as I stand up and move back a little bit, we had this over here. Look at this. So this is really unique. This here is the grinding stone here, but you see how it's broken off as well as this piece here. So look, you know, you could set it here and it's next to your, you know, your cutting board, so to speak, right here. So there you have all these tools that we found next to this cutting board. Well, friends, since I found that first rock circle with the uh, grinding slick, I've been here for several hours and I found another interesting thing. It's right in front of us. Can you see it? Let me come closer. Okay, let's see if you can see it come into focus. Uh, what we're looking at is a petroglyph. Now this petroglyph is known as the archaic style. In other words, the archaic style has a bunch of loops, whirls, lines, swirls. They don't seem to have any meaning to us today. However, I'm confident that at one time the ancients actually had a specific meaning for this symbol directly in front of us. One of the interesting things about this petroglyph over here, after I saw it, photographed it, and talked about it, I went about my way. And then later on, I moved around this rock, and look at this, on the back side are two bighorn sheep. Now here's something really important to uh, look at. You see these over here? You see how the coloration is somewhat gray? Now the stone is the same. It's not a different color on one side than the other. But if you take a look at this petroglyph right over here, this symbol actually does have a different color. So this air is returning to its patina. The patina is brown, okay? So this is very aged, very aged, compared to this one over here, see? This one is a little lighter. So my estimation is this here is, um, let's call it a newer petroglyph. It still could be hundreds, if not thousands of years old. But this one right here, in my opinion, is definitely much older than the bighorn sheep. One of the fascinating thing about this area, you can see it's a, a high desert area and it looks very desolate, but you know the ancient trails, some of them are still here. Look at this right over here. Okay, I'm at a place where people don't come, but look at this right here. Can you see this right here in front of us? Okay, see that line right there? This is an ancient trail. It's been thread upon for hundreds of years and if you look over here, you can, you can see it right here. It continues on up. And believe it or not, that is a village site right there. This is uh, actually quite fascinating. Uh, you can find these still existing hundreds of years from when they were first uh, used, and maybe even thousands. Well, I'm continuing to uh, search this area. Look at this right here. Oh, that's beautiful grids, loops, whirls, lines that don't appear to have any meaning, but let me tell you, this could very well be a map. Who knows? A map to the village site where people had their homes, just like a city block map. Again, this is only a guess on my part. There's one right there. Look at that. There's one right there. Almost looks like a, a starburst with a circle and lines. Look at this right here. Oh, this is fantastic. 
look at this very intricate although it's hard to make any sense of it because it doesn't have any uh, representational figures that we can identify for example a bird uh, an insect or a human well friends as we continue to search one of the prominent things here in this area or what I call grinding slicks my goodness look at this size of this one this is incredible so let's go around take a look all right look at this wow well right over there definitely oh my goodness it's smooth like marble look at this this looks like a potential mono oh yes <laughs> this here more than likely is the grinding stone right here that went with this slick look at that wow hard to believe one of the interesting things about this mono if you take a look at it of course this side is really smooth and this is a side that was used for grinding but look at this right over here see this the stone was actually shaped and it's shaped here on both ends so this was definitely a manufactured uh, mono you can see over here the the marks to make it more like a box like structure um, wow very very interesting again take a look real closely you can see where the stone was shaped right here right here look at that right angle turns right here so this stone is a what I would call a stone age tool that was used for thousands of years this type of stone this type of uh, equipment so to speak was used around the world around the world for thousands and thousands of years as I'm looking at this petroglyph sitting here and examining it it has some interesting features so look at this here's the petroglyph oftentimes they're done on a flat face but look at this this turns right here the petroglyph symbols continue around the curve and right over here a 90 degree turn the symbol continues okay Look at this, this is some kind of weave or basket pattern with lines right over here, but it continues around the corner. And look at this, right over here, along the lip of this boulder, right over here, you can see again, there was some etchings, and they go down right over there, looks like some kind of burst, star burst, sun burst. So this has some intricate layers to it. Uh, as I said, this petroglyph continuing around the corner. So it's uh, quite fascinating well as we continue our search I'm going to show you a very interesting petroglyph that we almost missed my friend Dave looked down and there it was can you see it uh, let's get in there real close okay there it is elongated body okay but see how the horns they don't go in a circle they just go halfway and look how long the body is with a long tail so the question is, is this a bighorn sheep or another type similar animal that roamed this area? One of the things that I've mentioned previously is that when you come upon this site, you really have to look two, three, four, five times, maybe even all day at the same site. And every time you look, you pick up something different. So right now we've been passing a lot of uh, petroglyphs, which I would say are in the archaic style. But then as I came back here for the fourth time, which I hadn't noticed before, look at this directly in front of us over here. This is a petroglyph. It's a representation of a human. It looks like a humanoid figure. Look at that. You can see the shoulder, the arms, and the head, and the legs. And you can tell that it's a man many of the petroglyphs of people that we see or of men not too many of women and you can see right over here this is the penis right here so they tend to draw that in so you can actually differentiate between uh, this is a petroglyph of a woman or a man well I'm back at this petroglyph uh, that we saw earlier now my initial impression was that this was an archaic petroglyph then my friend Dave came here and he took a look at it and right away he said well I see a mountain lion there a cougar and two sheep so <laughs> well here it is here's a bighorn sheep right here okay here's another bighorn sheep right here now see this right over here hard to tell but you can see the head right here 
the mouth is kind of open. But see this right here? This long tail right here? Now, this is what a mountain lion has. It has an extremely long tail compared to other cats. And often in petroglyphs, that's how you can identify that uh, they were probably uh, trying to draw or an engrave or, you know, create a petroglyph of a mountain lion. And they are, in fact, endemic to this area. So there again, here's the ears right there. Okay, there's the long tail right there. And there's the feet right here. Very, very interesting. As I said, my first impression when I just walked up onto it was that it was an archaic petroglyph. But in fact, it's what we call figurative. In other words, there are animals depicted here. Could be humans in other places. But figurative is a representation of a person, uh, a plant, an animal, insect. In other words, when you look at it, you can tell what it is. Before us, we have a very interesting boulder. You see this right here? It's cracked in two. Now, if you look at the patina, it all looks like one color. But when you come real close to it, right over here, you can see this darkening element over here. Okay, so it's trying to return to its original patina. But right over here, if you run your hand here, and right over there, let me go over it. Can you see the difference in coloration? Well, this was a grinding slick at one time, but now it's broken in two. And I tell you, if we're to return to its original patina, it takes a very, very, very long time. And hard to say why this broke over here, what caused it. But definitely, if you run your hand here, it's extremely smooth compared to here, which is very rough. One of the interesting things about this type of configuration, this is a volcanic rock, and you see the pitting over here? It's natural to the rock. Now, although this is smooth and food was prepared, this didn't seem to interfere with this type of slick. But the fascinating thing is right here, these holes, these small little inner nodules, so to speak, scientists can come here and dig out what's pitted inside these small little holes here and perhaps be able to tell from a scientific perspective what type of food was processed right here on this ancient matate. So there's still a lot to be found. There's still a lot to be discovered, especially with new techniques that are coming along with modern science. As I'm walking around this area, um, I'm seeing a lot of slicks. For example, right over here, a lot of them in this area. But let me show you one feature over here, which you don't often find in areas like this. Okay, here is an actual mortar. Okay, we've just seen a slick, and this is a mortar. Now, mortars were used for bigger seed products. For example, in California, the mortar was used to process the acorn. Well, here in a desert-like environment, the seeds that are available, the grassland seeds, are fairly small. So a grinding slick is what you would use. So you don't find these too often in what I'll call a high desert environment. What I'm doing is I'm standing on a large boulder here surveying this uh, village site to see if I can find any anomalies amongst the boulders here. And directly in front of us, you see that boulder right there? Can you see the white spot? Right from here I can tell that it's what's called a grinding slick. So let's take a walk over there and uh, examine it. So I'm walking towards it. The wind is picking up a little bit here. And oh my goodness, look at this. Okay, right there's the grinding slick. But look at that. It looks like a petroglyph. So let's go in there real close. Wow, look at this. It is a petroglyph. Okay, here's a circle, a line, another circle, a line that comes around here. Here's another circle and another line going down into the slick. Friends, to me this is rare. I see a lot of slicks, a lot of mortars, but very rarely do I actually see a petroglyph as part of the mix. Now this style right here appears to be somewhat archaic. In other words, circles and lines that don't seem to have much of a representational value. In other words, like a, an image of an animal, an insect, or a person.
Well, friends, the fascinating thing about the area that we're exploring is that within a mile, okay, radius, we found three village sites. This morning, we were right over there, okay, in that area. You can see the rocks over there. So that's usually a sign that there might be something there. And of course, there's an old stream over here. So we have a plateau with boulders and rocks over there, and we have a stream. Now, the trail that I showed you over that was back there, the ancient trail, it actually continues and it goes to that hill directly in front of us, the low hill, not the super high one, but the slow one. There's a village site on the back side of that. And as we go left on that slope right over there, there's another village site. So there's three village sites here within a radius of probably less than a mile. Now let me show you something fascinating. Okay, as we were exploring this village area right over here where those rocks are, you know, I came down here by the stream because this is always an indication that the ancients lived in this type of area where they had access to water. So you can see that it comes to a high point right here. And what we have here is a promontory looking over this grand vista over here. And let me show you what's at this promontory point. It's very, very fascinating. Can you see them right there directly in front of us? There's a large boulder. Actually, there's several large boulders here with petroglyphs on them. Truly fascinating. Look at that. So right here, when I first looked at it, I thought to myself, my goodness, okay, it's an archaic style. And I wonder if this is a map, a map of the this area. As I said, there's three village sites here. This is really fascinating because this is one of the boulders where the petroglyphs encompass or encircle the whole boulder. So look at this over here. Here's the top. Look at this. Fascinating. And we have this this classic circle with a line, circle with a line, a line, a circle. Again, it's somewhat of an archaic style. Okay, we'll go around and look at this. Again, it continues. Really, really exciting, at least for me. And uh, Look at this over here. Now I'm walking around the boulder, you'll see my shadow, but okay, we're back in the sun. Look at this right here. It just continues right here. Really, really beautiful. There you go. One of the things that I noticed when I came up here is this type of vista here, this grand vista. You'll usually, well, it's hard to say usually, oftentimes in these places where the Grand Vista is, you'll find petroglyphs if there is a habitation area nearby. I mean, this is the thing we do today, so what was happening thousands of years ago is no different than what we would do today. Oftentimes, we put our symbols, our crosses on top of high mountains or on Grand Vista points. So anyways, let's go here to the next boulder right over here. This is another fascinating series of boulders. Uh, beautiful uh, petroglyphs right over here. So look at this right here. Fascinating. Again, archaic in style, loops, whirls, circles. I ask myself, is this some kind of ancient map? Over here is another one, barely discernible right here. But what we'll do is, Okay, now you'll hear me huffing and puffing. Uh, it could be dangerous, you know, you slip here and you fall. Look at that right over there. There's another boulder. Uh, this is really interesting. A lot of linear elements. Okay, I'll go around on this side. Again, I have to be careful because there's a lot of loose boulders here. Here we go right there. Beautiful. But look at this over here. Again, this is wonderful. Circles and lines, circles and lines connecting. So this is a very favored motif in this area, apparently. So there we go. It continues completely around the boulder. So this is truly uh, fascinating.